Hey, John, did you watch the game last night? Oh, man, Gwen went four for four. You know, he keeps it up. We're going to win the pennant. You better keep it up. I'm taking my boy to see the game next Sunday. Dr. Hanford, call for you on line two. Dr. Hanford? Dad, it's me. Hey, Timmy, only two more days to go. This summer's going to be the best you ever had. You won't believe what I've got planned. Dad, she, that's why I'm calling. Oh, no, 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 you don't. My lips are sealed. I'm not going to tell you another thing until you get here. Just get that immediately. Your staff, Timmy. Hanford, your staff. Sorry, Timmy. It's an emergency. I've got to run. I'll see you at the airport. All right, I got it. One in uh, room three. Go to 5% of DW and we can back to Belmont. Uh, yes, Dr. I was at the What's up? We're resisting ventilation, but I can't intubate. I'm going to switch to a straight line. Notify Dr. Cleary in the OR. We're bringing up the patient staff. Let's get ready to move them out. On behalf of the entire staff, I want to wish you a happy, healthy summer. And remind you that all lockers must be cleaned out no later than 5 p.m. today, or their contents will be donated to the New York Coalition for the Homeless. We have a stalled vehicle on the number one lane at University Avenue. They're slowing in both directions. On the westbound 94, we have an injury accident at Kelton Road. You just about to keep that one up. On the northbound 5, we have an injury accident at Kelton Road. Are you a beat? I am. Come here. No one can resuscitate like my wife. I'm a professional. A professional? RN. Oh, I thought you were talking about... Uh... You! <laughs> Hello? quiet over there. Got a phone call from Timmy today. Oh, how is he? Great. I can't believe I'm getting him for the whole summer. Nervous as hell. Why? I just want to make up for every day we've been apart. Every day, every hour, every minute. You will. You think he'll like the house? Why not? We do. I mean, will he feel at home? I just say sometimes you have to get comfortable in a strange house. But it's his house, too. We just have to make sure he knows that. I know. I can't wait to see the look on his face. When he sees the pool, I bet his eyes just pop right out of his head. <laughs> Thank you. Can't believe I didn't get a phone call from your father. Why? He never accepts anything without a fight. Why do you always put him down? He's just making an observation, nothing more. Look, isn't it possible Paul just understands how Tim feels? The Paul I know has never been understanding his life. Why would he suddenly change? Maybe you should be just a little less suspicious. I know him, Louis. Unconditional acceptance is not in his character. What does that mean? Oh, it's too difficult to explain. You always say that. No. I can't wait to see the look on his face. When he sees the pool, I bet his eyes just pop right out of his head. <laughs> 
I didn't get a phone call from your father. Why? He never accepts anything without a fight. Why do you always put him down? I was just making an observation, nothing more. Look, isn't it possible Paul just understands how Tim feels? The Paul I know has never been understanding in his life. Why would he suddenly change? Maybe you should be just a little less suspicious. I know him, Louis. Unconditional acceptance is not in his character. What does that mean? Oh, it's too difficult to explain. You always say that. It means... Louis, please. What? Don't do that. What? I can speak for myself. Just forget it, okay? I don't care. Traffic's gonna be murder. I will make it. You think? I better drive. You're gonna run us off the road. I think you're right. things about your father in front of you. You shouldn't say them at all, Mom. I know, Tim, but sometimes it just comes out. It's still hard for me to talk about your father and not get angry. Oh, you can understand that, can't you? I just wish you would try harder. I'm working on it, Tim. I really am. Honey, just stay here. I'll be right back. Squishing strictly for babies. I'm almost 12. You're sure growing up fast. What do you expect? Hello, Paul. Hi. Timmy didn't tell me you were bringing him out. I'm here for the Organization of Health Professionals Convention. I'm the guest speaker. Really? Yes, really. Oh, we have to get going. They won't let Shandell you double park. Now. I'm sorry, but... Where's your suitcase? I got everything I need in my backpack. How can that little bag carry everything you need? I just go, okay? Come on. Bye, Mom. Hey, don't I get a kiss? <laughs> you call that a kiss? Oh, uh, Mom, Louie is coming. You better get out of here before they give your father a ticket. Come on, guys. 
sorry, they couldn't wait. Traffic's impossible. Is it? Hmm. Let's go. Hey, Timmy, how come you didn't bring your suitcase? I got everything I need in here. In your backpack, but you're staying the whole summer. That's what I got to talk to you about, Dad. Hey, it's fine with me. You know, I think it's crazy to keep bringing things back and forth. So tomorrow you and I are going to go shopping. And then every time you come down, you'll have your stuff right here waiting for you. That sound good? I really got to tell you something important. Tim, Dad. look there. That is one of the greatest zoos in the world. Over 100 acres. Now, a zoo that big would take all summer to explore. So you and I are going to go tomorrow and get a head start. Paul? Oh. What? Uh, why don't you let Timmy have a chance to talk? Sure. What do you think, partner? Fine, Dad. Only, I really got to... Only what? What, do you think it's too ambitious? Well, how about this? Why don't we take the zoo section by section and we'll tackle the citizens tomorrow. You know what the citizens are? You know what they are? No. Birds of the parrot family. The San Diego Zoo has the world's largest collection. Won't that be fun? Whatever you say. What's going on, partner? What's happening? Nothing. I didn't come here to see a bunch of dumb birds. Okay, well, we can look at something else. I can't. What do you mean you can't? I'm not staying. I'm going with Mom to France, and we're leaving tomorrow night. What? France? You're going with... What are you... You can't just come down here for one night and then turn around and, and fly back to New York. I'm not going to New York. I'm going to Paris. I'm going to go straight over the pole, and it's no big deal. You mean no big... It's a big deal to me. I'm sorry, Dad. I tried to tell you on the phone, but you wouldn't listen. You were too busy. You're always too busy when I have to tell you something important. Okay, now I'm listening. Now tell me, what the hell is your mother up to? Well, you... I'm talking to Tim. You're always on her case, and it's not fair. You should be thanking Mom. If it wasn't for her, you wouldn't be seeing me at all. What do you mean? This is the last place on Earth she wanted to come for a convention. She wasn't going to, okay? But she did. So leave her alone. It's my decision to go to Paris. Why, Timmy? I changed my mind. I have a right to do that. Not at the last minute, you don't. You told me plenty of stuff the last minute, and I didn't get to say anything about it. Timmy, what stuff? Timmy, wait, come back. Wait a minute, Timmy. I don't understand. I thought you really liked Shandell. We've been together almost a year. You and Mom are together for 12. And so what? So what? Damn it, Timmy. We've been through this already. We had those long talks, remember? Yeah, you talked. I listened. I'm sorry, Timmy. I swear I had no idea you felt like this. Me neither. You didn't want me to meet them, did you? I told you there was no time. They were double parked, holding up traffic. Paul raced in and out. I barely had time to say hello myself. How long would it have taken to point me out? One minute, two minutes? I was almost there. Why would you want to meet an ex-husband? Most men would loathe the idea. I'd be happy never to meet him. But he's Tim's father, and I, I happen to think it's the only responsible way to behave. Fine.
call him up. It's your free time. Do what you want with it. At the moment, I have all I can handle. I have a paper to present tomorrow. Coming out here was a big mistake. It's just making me miserable. Me too. <laughs> well, why didn't you tell me it was a terrible idea? Because it's not about you and me. Oh, what's convenient? Never was. And never will be. I know. I know. I'm so full. Yeah, Timmy, you sure liked that hickory cheeseburger, didn't you, son? Yeah, as far as you could, too. Let me get that. Too, Timmy. We want you to be comfortable. Hey, where do you see the pool? I'm gonna win. Sometimes I stick. <laughs> you wanna try? Hey! How did you do that? <laughs> where do you see this? Go for a swim, it's heated. No oh, thanks, you're kind of tired. Ouch! It's the only trouble with a moonlight swim. Just like Ryder Lake. Ryder Lake? Timmy knows. It's a place we went fishing, but the only bites we got were from mosquitoes. <laughs> Remember what we did there? Forget it, Dad. Oh, come on! No! Were you chickening out on me? Okay, you asked for it. All right. Give me your hand. Give me my... You don't trust me? No. Okay, come on. Come on. Ready? One, two, three. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I'm crazy! Like father, like son. See how much fun we could have this summer, Timmy? Timmy? Louie, do you think I was wrong? About what? Maybe Tim wouldn't be so confused if I just said no. You can't come with us to France. Your father gets you for the summer, and we have to stick with that. Feeling rejected is better than feeling confused? Is that what you're saying? At least you know. It's rejection. It has a name. Paul left. I was confused as hell. Now I'm angry. Isn't it better for me to know what I'm feeling? It's only if it makes you happy. Why do you put up with me? Because I love you. You know, what scares me more than anything in the world? What? Being alone again. I know. I was alone my whole life. And now I'm not. I have a family. A wife. And a son. Just when I thought it'd never happen. I'd follow you and Tim wherever I had to. You make it so easy to love you. That's it, idea.
damn door. Here, I'll pull you push. I am. Oh. I really gotta get that fixed. Uh, I'll do it. I've been saying it for weeks. Well, at least I'm consistent here. I know you find that annoying, but trust me, it's better than being thrown a curve. How did you sleep last night? Pretty good. I couldn't turn off my mind. I just never thought it would be so complicated. It doesn't have to be. Explain that to Timmy. When I was a little girl, my mother used to just kiss away the hurt. I wish I could do that for Timmy. I wish we both could. Is he awake? I don't know. The door is shut. I wonder when that started. Eleven is a sensitive age. Maybe he sleeps without pajamas. I fail to see the point. The point is he likes to copy you. Well, maybe in the past, when Naomi didn't make me compete for his affections. I think you're judging her unfairly. Really? What do you call this trip to France? A vacation? That's just a smokescreen. What has it done? Naomi's chance for revenge. She couldn't keep me from having a life, but she'll keep me from having my son or die trying. Why can't you and Naomi ever just talk to each other? Because with us, it's never about talking. It's about winning and losing. Don't trying to prove your right. It always comes down. Jacuzzi's on. But the water's perfect by now, 100 degrees. What do you mm. say? You go. Spoil sport. I don't feel like getting into my suit. That's what I was counting on. <laughs> Timmy could walk in any minute. Yeah, well, that's one thing you don't have to worry about the same time tomorrow. What's wrong? Nothing. I, I have a slight headache, that's all. I'm not getting sick, are you? You feel a little warm. I'll take two aspirin and call you in the morning. Right. Hey, Timmy, catch! Not bad. Haven't lost your reflexes. 
What's this for? I remember this one year, I came rushing home like I was shot out of a cannon. School was over for the summer, and I was so happy I thought I'd bust. My father was waiting for me on the porch with this silly grin on his face. He was holding something behind his back, and he said, last day of school, now you can stop thinking and have fun. And he gave me a brand new baseball glove. I guess I just wanted you to have something like that to remember. I feel kind of funny about taking it. I mean, it's not my birthday or Christmas or something like that. Besides, how am I going to use it? I'm going to be in France all summer. No time like the present. <clears throat> Come on. Come on. Got to get you back in training, kiddo. Always check your runner. Go into a stretch. First base, second base, fire. Home plate, beautiful. Dandelions are taking over your lawn, Dad. Yeah, well, I kind of like them. They remind me of little golden suns. Just weeds. No, no, you wouldn't say that if you knew where their name came from. It's French. So what? So what? You're going to France. I figured you'd want to know about this kind of stuff. Dandelion comes from Dent de Lyon, which means tooth of the lion from the shape of their leaves. Hey, Dad, school's out. Timmy? How about if I give you a dime for every one of these you can dig up? Too much work. You gotta get them by the roots, they grow right back. That'd be a good project for you and me to do together. How about that? But, you know, you'll have to stay. It'll take us the whole summer. It's really hot out here, Dad. Can I have something to drink? Sure. That's making me crazy. What? The way you just open and shut these stupid doors. Hi, Shetty. Hi. You look very good out there. Thanks. What are you making? Omelettes? Chandel's omelettes can rival anything you'll get in France. Honest, this woman studied French cooking in New York. And if she messes up the omelette, you can forgive her because she looks so terrific with a spatula. So what do you say, Sir Timothy? Will you at least think about staying? I think you'd prefer it if I didn't mess up his omelette. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I, I just hope you know how much Chandel and I want you here with us this summer. I know I've said it, but I, I've been thinking maybe you just didn't believe me. I'd be pretty dumb if I didn't. As long as I know it isn't because of something I didn't say. Dad, look, it's my decision to go with Mom. I know that's hard for you to believe. You've said it, so I should believe you, right? Right. The trouble is, I assumed we'd be together. I mean, both of us did. I mean, Chandel took all of her sick leave and, and vacation time from the hospital just so she could stay with you. Now, you know why it's never good to assume anything. For one thing, it's unfair to Timmy. Yeah, but what about me? Don't you think it's unfair that I should have to do without you this whole summer? Yes. Yes? Does that mean you'll change your mind? No. But you just agreed it was unfair. Lots of things happen that are unfair, Dad. Then maybe we should change them. Sometimes you can't. Timmy, don't you like your eggs? Mm, not really. Sorry. I remember when you could eat a half carton of eggs at one sitting. The truth is, Dad, they're not very good for you. Who told you that? Everyone knows it. No, the whole cholesterol issue has come under fire lately. Did your mother tell you that? Paul. Oh. No, I mean, if I thought they were his own ideas, I wouldn't care. Besides, eggs give me a rash. Get away. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, this is great. She's got you hating eggs and cats. Who knows what's next? I don't hate cats. I just don't like them licking me. Why? They can transmit disease. So can humans. Oh, Dad, for one thing, humans don't lick. What about kissing? Would you like it if they didn't kiss? 
Maybe. Oh, this is wonderful. Now, <laughs> you're afraid to kiss? I am not, and I didn't say that. Pa, this has got to stop. It's getting silly. No, no, this, this really interests me. What other kind of nonsense has she been telling you? It isn't nonsense. A lot of people write the same stuff as Mom. Yes, except they're a little better qualified to do so. Oh, yeah? Tell it to the Sorbonne. The what? It's a school in Paris. I know what the Sorbonne is. What's that got to do with anything? They're not afraid of nutritionists. What's that supposed to mean? She may not be a doctor. I'm sure going to pay her like one. Timmy? Is your mother on the phone? What's the Sorbonne got to do with all this? I mean, I thought your mother was taking you to France on a vacation. Timmy? Oh, here he is, right here. Thanks. Hi, Mom. Hi, how are you doing? Fine, we just ate breakfast. Oh, what did you have? Can't you let him enjoy himself? I was only asking. Mom, uh -huh. when did you give your talk? Oh, uh, ooh. In about an hour. Don't hang up before I talk to you. Relax, Mom. It can be great. Thanks, honey. Uh, Tim, you have a good time with your father. I'm off to see the sights. Oh. Knock him dead. Thanks. Tim, uh, did, did you say anything to your father about Louis? No. Um, Mom, I think you should tell him. Tell me what? I'd rather not. Well, there's always Western Union. <laughs> Very funny. Give me the phone. Mom, Dad wants to wish you good luck on your presentation. I do not. Come on, Dad. She's all nervous and stuff. Naomi, what's all this crap about the Sorbonne? Oh, Dad. I'm running a six-week seminar. Six? What's Timmy going to be doing alone for six weeks? Everything's fine, Paul. It's all been worked out. To whose advantage, Naomi? Just answer me that. Just wish her good luck and say goodbye. I don't have time for this, Paul. How can you still be so vindictive? Tim wants to come with me. That's bull and you know it. Okay, think what you want, Paul. Just have him at the airport by 9 o'clock tonight. She hung up? Yeah. She still cuts me off when she doesn't like what I see. She just... What's that? My hospital paper. Well, I agree with Dr. Saunders. Maybe. <laughs> Check with me later. Oh, Barry, wait a minute. Do you happen to know where they're holding that convention for the um, organization of, what is it, the Organization of Health Professionals, right? Thanks. You have to go to the hospital? Yes. I'll be gone for a couple of hours. Damn it. What is it? I figured it out. He doesn't want to hurt her. Who? Naomi. She's alone and Timmy's feeling sorry for her, but it's okay to hurt me. Isn't that the craziest damn thing? He must think fathers are stronger. Yeah, well, they're not. Play Little Caesars Lucky Sevens game. Everyone wins twice every time. I just won two pizzas. This must be my lucky day. And try Little Caesars Lucky Sevens Pizza Pizza. Two medium pizzas with seven toppings for only $7.77. Not one, but two pizzas. Pizza Pizza. Of all the extraordinary new automobiles that come to America, only one was awarded Motor Trend Import Car of the Year, the Mitsubishi 3000 GT. With all-wheel drive, all-wheel steering, ABS brakes, and 300 horsepower. The Mitsubishi 3000 GT, import car of the year. Mitsubishi, the word is getting around. Eat your cereal, it's healthy. <laughs> Open wide. That's it. I've had it with these healthy, schmelthy tasting cereals. I want a cereal that tastes so good. You want to eat it. Your mini wheat. Dad, these are good for you. I don't want to hear that. See? No salt, no cholesterol, fat free. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Wrong number. <laughs> Kellogg's Frosted Mini Wheats. Surprise. They're good for you. It's got lots of fiber, too. I didn't hear that. <laughs> I heard that. 
Kids feel sick at the thought of taking bad-tasting medicine. Open up. But not new grape-flavored Dimatap DM for colds and coughs. You'll like Dimatap. New Dimatap DM. It relieves kids as well as colds, as well as coughs. Introducing the new Gripper Zipper from Ziploc, the easiest closing bag there is. I can even close it with my hands tied behind my back. Yes, the zipper is grabbing hold. It's locking. Feel it close the first time, every time. Ziploc bags with the new Gripper Zipper. NBC Sunday Night at the Movies will return following these messages. Monday, Fresh Prince has a friend in from Philly. Can't touch it. And Bel Air is beginning to look like Homeboy Hotel. Then, Anthony, you're out of the house. Blossom's dad gets tough. I did it because I love him. Aren't you just a bottom of sweater? And Blossom does protest it. Are you finished? Yes. NBC Monday. I know you want something that looks like this And tastes like this and this and this Oh yeah Rogo pretzel A skinny pretzel With a big fat taste And that's a nice twist Rogo pretzels in a package like this And this and this Oh yeah My company came to me and they suggested, strongly, not just suggested, that I seek assistance. Uh, I thought it was to fire me. And instead, they gave me an opportunity to save my life. On our next, A Current Affair, A Real Life Silence of the Lambs. The Summer My Father Grew Up continues, starring John Ritter, Margaret Witten, and Joe Spano. Where are we going? Your father and I have a favorite walk. Uh, are we going to see some horses? I hope so. That's great. I don't get to see a lot of horses in New York. Mm-hmm. Get inside. How's this headaches are a symptom? <laughs> She's right. She says the diet can be lacking. Sometimes. You take vitamins? Why don't you recognize this headache? It's the one caused by drinking too much coffee. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. The EPA insists there is a large margin of safety, but in conclusion, I would like to summarize the following facts. Dioxin is the most powerful cause of cancer ever tested in laboratory animals. The Ryan study, presented at the International Dioxin Symposium, found that trace amounts of dioxin migrate into milk from milk cartons that are made from chlorine-bleached paper. Children are the number one consumers of milk. In our nation's school lunch programs alone, they consume over five billion half-pint cartons per year. Every one of those cartons is made with paper contaminated with dioxin. Dad's pretty upset about the summer. He's afraid of losing you. I'm afraid of losing Mom. I know. You? Oh, Timmy. I've always known who your mother is. I don't ever want you to confuse us. Just love us both. Hmm? Hmm. Mom says dad gets everything he wants. He never has to pay the piper. <laughs> so what do you think? I don't know. If I stay with dad this summer, he'll feel great. But what about mom? How will you feel, Timmy? What about you? I think I'll lose either way. Are there any questions? Good morning. Uh, I'm a biochemist in food enzymes. Uh, I'd like to know what concerns, if any, have been raised in other countries about dioxin in milk. 
Milk in Sweden is now packaged in unbleached cartons, and companies in New Zealand have been asked to stop using chlorine bleached paper. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Would you mind if I try to put the trace amounts that you spoke of in perspective? Go right ahead. You told us that a 110-pound child drinking from a single half pint of milk from a bleached paper carton would ingest 0.6 picogram per kilogram of the body weight of the equivalent of the most toxic dioxins. Is that correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. And this is 100 times the daily amount that the EPA has estimated is likely to raise cancer by one in a million if continued over a lifetime? Those are the figures. Uh-huh. Would it be fair to say that these trace levels of dioxin are so minuscule that it would be like searching for a single grain of salt in a swimming pool filled with sugar? No, I wouldn't put it exactly that way. How exactly would you put it? No quantity is acceptable, doctor, no matter how minuscule. Plastic and glass containers reveal no traces of dioxin whatsoever. Which container do you want for your child? Go ahead, he loves carrots. What's his name? Summer. Can I tell you a secret? If you let me tell you one. Okay. Me first. Mom's married. Last month. Do you like him? Louie is great. I'm not saying he's better than Dad, though. He's like I am, a friend. Yeah, like that. Okay, your turn. What? Tell me your secret. Um. You know these headaches I have? Shani, are you sick? I'm pregnant. Wow. How come Dad didn't tell me? He doesn't know yet. I'm always going to be mad. Why? He hates secrets. I know, but I wanted to tell you first. Why? Well, I've been worried you might think Paul and I couldn't love you as much if there was another child. I wouldn't think that. Well, I know that. But Dad might think I think that, right? <laughs> right. You tell Dad, I think it's going to be kind of neat when you get a little brother or sister. You know something? Now that you've said it, I think it is, too. Shani? What, honey? Tell Dad this time he better not mess up. What gives you the right to keep disrupting my life? Why the hell don't you get one so Timmy can stop feeling guilty and stay with me? That's not what he wants. It's his idea to come. Timmy doesn't have an idea in his head that you didn't put there. I'm sorry this comes as such a shock, but Tim, as he prefers to be called, has grown up. He has his own opinions, his own feelings, and like it or not, you're going to have to deal with his conclusions. Those guys are crazy. Does Dad sew them up after they wipe out? They rarely take a fall. Shani, do you think you're getting a boy or a girl? Hmm, it's, it's too early to tell. Mom knew I was going to be a boy. How did you know? Because I kick so hard. I heard her say on the phone, it's the male instinct to kick the, you know what, out of women. I, I think she's very wrong. You wouldn't think so. 
She saw Mom and Dad told her about you. She was all hysterical. And then Dad told her he was moving in with you. She just fell apart all over the place. It scares me to think about it. My dad made her feel he was killing her. Do you think men always do that to women? I think women can hurt men just as much. But you didn't hurt Dad. No, I didn't. Mom says you should have slammed the door in his face. Oh, I love him, Timmy. I couldn't. Mom says it would have worked things out if he had no place to go. I think Mom's right. I don't know, Timmy. Maybe that's something you need to ask your father. If you were wearing the key, you wouldn't have to ring the bell. I beg your pardon? I'm sorry, I expected someone else. You Paul Hanford? Yeah. I'm Louis Messine. It's nice to finally meet you. Is it? I know what you mean. It, these things aren't easy. I came on an impulse because I, I thought it might be less awkward if we talked in person. I apologize if that's an imposition. Mr. Messine. Louis, please. I don't mean to be rude, but I have no idea who you are. Your wife didn't mention me? No. This is embarrassing. Naomi and I were married last month. I, I just assumed she told you. Naomi married? Yes. Mr. Messine, Naomi is my ex-wife. I know, I made sure of that before I married her. You called her my wife, Mr. Messine. Louis, please. That's a little bit deceptive, don't you? Well, it certainly wasn't my intention. I didn't think it was possible to mean anybody but Naomi. Yes, but Naomi is no longer my wife. Of course not, she's mine. Congratulations. <sighs> I can see this was a mistake. I was hoping we could... I'm sorry, I should have called. Hi, Dad. Hi. It's nice of Shandell to invite me to come along. But Dad doesn't think so. Well, we're all in a tough situation. I'm sorry you came. No! I'm really glad to have this chance to meet your dad. Me too. He's back. Let's just make this a nice day for me. It's going to be fun, really.
want to stay on top. Do you ever think about Mom? What do you mean? I don't know. About being together and stuff like that. No, Timmy, I don't. We kept the picture. What picture? The one in your bedroom with all of us together. You mean the one with you and me? You and me and Mom. She's still in it. I looked. Frankly, I have no idea. Mom used the scissors. What? Mom cut you out of every picture she had. Hey, you want another one? I can't eat anymore. I can't walk anymore. Well, let's take the Sky Fari back. Where is it? It's right over there. It's too far. Oh, come on. You think I'm going to leave you for the buzzards? Not your paw. Come on, son. Let's go. Let's go, you two. We're going to hit the trail. Let's ride. You pull me down right now. I just ate three hot dogs and I'm so sick. Oh, sick. Sick. I love that word, sick. It keeps me in business. Honk. Honk, man. Hurl. Ooh. Guess we're going, too. Guess so. I can't finish this. X, please. Sorry, guys. No food on the car. Oh. to my wife in a manner of speaking are you also a nutritionist no no fun and games that's my business has naomi put you up to this of course not that was a joke paul on a toy store in new york meeting you in shandell was my only motive for coming I'm sure you understand that uh, Naomi and I didn't separate on the best of terms. She knew about Shandell and made it very ugly when we went to court. She told me. Did she also tell you I'm supposed to have Timmy this summer? Yeah. Then what the hell is she up to? She's just trying to protect him from... Protect him from his father? That's a good one. You know, she doesn't need fun and games, pal. She needs a shrink. Got nothing to say good, because I'm not interested in a third-party opinion. You may think I'm a third-party pal. But I care a hell of a lot what happens to that boy when he's under my roof. You don't know a damn thing about it. Neither do you. You're so busy questioning Naomi's murders, you can't even see what's happening here. His son lost his father. And now I've come along, and he's afraid he's going to lose his mother, too. He lost me? Is that what he says? He doesn't say it, but isn't it true? No! I tried for custody. The court ruled against me. And if you'd won, he would have lost his mother. I happen to know that if he were free to choose, he would want to live with me. You're wrong, Paul. You don't know my son. You weren't there the day I left. He begged and pleaded. He thought it was something he'd done. He, he, he thought I didn't want him. Can you believe that? And Naomi, she stayed locked in her bedroom while I tried to explain. She let him scream and cry because she wanted him to suffer. Paul, she wasn't deaf. You could hear the kid all the way down the block. But did she come out and say one damn word to reassure him or to comfort him? No, not one damn word. What kind of mother doesn't come out and say something, anything? Go ahead, take him. He wants to be with you. Take him, Paul. I mean, even if she told him lies, if it would stop the pain at that moment. But she didn't care about protecting him because... because she knew I'd hear him screaming for the rest of my life. Checkmate. What? 
For a child, the voice will always be checkmate. It's like... It's like a jigsaw puzzle. But all Tim knows, one day he had a whole picture, the next day just pieces. Somehow he was careless and it happened. You left them, Paul. You left them and Naomi stayed. For Tim, there is no other truth. So, how'd you guys like the ride? I'm not sure. Why not? It's a little more than I bargained for. Yeah, me too. What's with you guys? Come on, we gotta find a phone. No, that shouldn't be a problem. Fine. I'll see you then. Singer's gonna be late. I'll have to cover maybe 30 minutes at the most. I can drive Shandell and Tim back to the house. Thanks, I'd like that. Dad, can I go with you? Yeah, yeah, that'll be fun. Give me a chance to show you off. Okay. See you back at the house. Yeah. Yeah. Wear your seatbelt. I always do. Tim? See you at the airport. Yeah. Old stuff. Because I'm old. Jimmy, how come you're not wearing this? Dad, I want to be honest, but I don't want you to feel bad. Be honest. Don't worry how I feel. Me being here, it's a visit. Do you understand? No, I don't. Remember that first day you packed your bag and left our house? You know, I had to leave you with your mother. Dad, I'm talking about something else. Remember the first time you took me to stay with you and Shani, and you explained how I could only stay for the weekend? Remember what I did? I cried and I screamed. I said I wasn't going back. So you invented this game, so I always knew where I lived. Remember? Yes. I put my house key on that chain for you to wear. You said? I said, when you come to stay with Daddy, you will put that key into the door and then you will know you're home because you have the key. She made me take me to Mom's. I always ring the doorbell because that's what people do when they go visiting. I'm not going to take them. You have to, Dad. I have a home. Your home is here with Shani and me. No, Dad. My home is in New York with Mom and Louie. That's where I live. You've got to understand. I'm not taking the key. You have to, Dad. I don't want to play anymore. It's my decision. It's my decision. Dios mío. Señora González, it would be better if you waited over there. Por favor. Joseph, please, listen to the doctor. He only wants to help you. Joseph, I promise we are not going to hurt you. I don't want a needle. I don't need a needle. Mommy, mommy, mommy. I don't want a needle. I don't want a needle. What have we got here? Facial laceration. What's this little guy's name? Joseph. Joseph, huh? Let's try this another way. Uh, why don't you let him go? Is that the mother? Mm -hmm. Bring her over. Señora. Joseph, my name's Paul. Can we talk? Timmy, uh, would you bring us over a few tissues from that task over there? That a boy. How old are you, Joseph? Five. You're five? That's my son, Timmy. He's 11. He's going to hand you some tissues so he can blow your nose, okay? Can you blow your nose? Timmy, this is Joseph. Hi, Joseph. That a boy. Oh, yeah, that feels a little better, huh? <laughs> I like that t shirt. Did you see the movie? Uh-huh. I think Timmy liked the Joker the best, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. 
Who's your favorite superhero? Batman. Batman. I bet all your friends at school like Batman, too, huh? Did your mommy take you to see the movie? He held his hand. Mommies are pretty neat, aren't they? Yeah. How'd you get that cut on your chin, Joseph? I fell. You fell? That was pretty scary, huh? I don't want a needle. It's gonna hurt. Do you know what a pinch is? Can you show me? Can you pinch your arm? You see? It's a little pinch, right? Well, this is gonna hurt a little, but this little hurt is gonna take away that big hurt under your chin. You know, it's like when the Joker hits Batman and Batman gets a cut chin. Well, he has to get a little hurt to take away that big hurt, too. I know you're going to be even braver than Batman. Thanks for the ride. Uh, no problem. I owe your dad so many favors, really. Bye. Bye. How long it took. Where's Timmy? Isn't he here? I told Alita to drive him home over an hour ago. He's probably in the house. Timmy? Oh. Yeah, right, all right. That's what I thought. Thanks. I will. I will let you know. It's crazy. Alita said she dropped him off at four, just like I thought. Maybe he left us a note. Did you check his room? No, I've searched the whole house. He's not here. Let's try and reason this out. Maybe he went back to the hotel. How would he get there? I don't know. I don't know. Why would he just take off like that? No explanation, no goodbye? We had an argument on the way to the hospital. Paul, you didn't try to pressure him again to stay. You know, it'd be nice if once you could see things from my side. We're talking about a child, and you want me to take sides? No, 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 we're not talking about Timmy, and you know it. Who then, Naomi? She's not even here. No, that's funny. I hear her every time my son opens his mouth. It's not Timmy's problem. It's yours. Oh, right. Okay, so what am I supposed to do? Call her and tell her to stop brainwashing my kid? No, tell her unless you find Timmy, there's no kid for either one of you to brainwash. Alita, no, no, not a word. Yes, I will. Thanks.
still out looking. Did you call the police? Yes, but he's only been gone a few hours, and, and we don't really know why he's gone. Why would Tim leave the house without you or Paul knowing about it? Well, he was at the hospital with Paul and a nurse drove him home. And you weren't home. He's taking a nap. Why didn't you go and pick him up? I didn't have any hey, reason. This isn't helping. Has he come back? You didn't find him? No. I've driven everywhere. I don't know what else to do. Did you ask the neighbors? Yes. All of them? The ones that I... Will you get off my back? Hey, why don't we all just calm down here? It's easy for you to say. He's not your son. Come on, Paul. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm going a little crazy, you know? I'm making some coffee. Would anyone like some? Yeah, I'll have a cup. Naomi? Um, mineral water, if you have it. And two aspirin. We have club soda, which is the same thing, minus the fancy name. Club soda has added salt and man-made carbonation. It is not the same thing. Why on earth does it matter? Because I can't just sit around here. We should be out there looking for him. I've been doing that, damn it. I haven't. Louis, could we please... Hey, listen, if you want to look, fine. I'll take you to look. Louis is perfectly capable... Naomi! I don't know the area. It makes more sense if you go with Paul. Fine. I will go with Paul. Shandell, if Timmy comes back while we're gone, call me on my beeper. I will. Why aren't we taking the car? Shandell and I have a favorite walk. She took Timmy on it this morning, so it is possible he went off in this direction. You know what gets me? If you'd stayed in New York, you could have seen Tim every day, but you chose to move clear across the country, making that impossible, yet I'm the one you blame. You know what's impossible? is thinking I could ever get away from you. I can't believe you're still so hateful after all this time. You're the one who walked out. Right. After you told Timmy his father was an adulterer. You want to know what he thought it meant? It's pretty funny, actually. He thought it had something to do with worshipping the golden calf. I guess to a kid, idolater and adulterer sound about the same. Okay, we both get points for hateful. You know what he did after you told him? He searched the house. That's right. He thought if he could find my golden idols and get rid of them, you'd stop being angry and let me come back home. He had that wrong, didn't he? Timmy! You know, Naomi didn't mean those things she said to you. Oh, I know. I feel like a fish out of water. Meet another fish. Sometimes I think it would be better to stay out of it. But I never feel right either way. I know. It's so unfair. Two people marry. They have a child. Then what? do you say when it all falls apart? They haven't seen him. Are you sure? I have a picture. They haven't seen any little boys hanging around. Could you please slow down? Timmy says you cut up all my pictures. What kind of a message does that send him? The truth. I was angry. I'm still angry. So you're getting even with this trip, huh? No, I told him he could do whatever he wanted to. Oh, you're a big help. Well, I didn't try and talk him out of it, if that's what you mean. You bet it's what I mean. You want me unhappy, even if it hurts you. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the honeymoon you're sacrificing just to spite me, Mrs. Messine. And by the way, thanks a lot for telling me that. I was going to tell you. Timmy! Eventually. Timmy! Ah! 
Ow! Paul? What? My ankle. Paul? Yeah. be a real problem. Yeah, I know. Especially around horses. They can spook them, or even get stepped on if they come too close. So what you gonna do with it? I don't know. I gotta go in now. Bye. Bye. My name's Lisa. Mine's Tim. Hope you figured out, Tim. Yeah. Timmy! Timmy! I knew we should have taken the car. I already tried that. How are we going to find him if I can't even walk? We'll find him. I know what you're thinking. What? I always was a liability. Actually, that wasn't what I was thinking. What? You look a little heavier. I think I preferred what I thought you were thinking. No, it's a compliment, Naomi. <laughs> Looking fat is a compliment? I didn't say fat, I said a little heavier. You got so thin last year, I hardly recognized you. I thought you stopped looking. Oh, I managed a quick glance before you slammed the door in my face. Returning Timmy was always a real treat. It's 10 degrees outside, what did you expect? You never even asked me in. I don't ask twice. When was once? Twelve years ago? I needed Timmy in my life, and I've never been sorry. Never, not once. But you have. And I've never known how to change that. What are you talking about? I've never been sorry about Timmy. Oh, Paul. You resented the restrictions as fast as they came. I resented the restrictions you kept making. It's true he wasn't exactly planned, but Naomi... I believed you when you told me you wanted to drop out of med school. I could have been a damn good father, but you wouldn't let me. That's not true. If I tried to buy him things, you told me there was no money. When I moonlighted at the hospital so that there was, you told me I was a rotten father with no interest in his wife or child. I couldn't stand it anymore, Naomi. You were choking me. What did you want me to do? Let me enjoy him. Everything that gave me pleasure became impractical to you, and that started from the day he was born. That's the way you felt about it. Why didn't you have the guts to walk out then? Because I was stupid enough to think that I could just give up a little piece of myself and another and still be there for Timmy. Blame it on me, right? Every failure, every disappointment, well, not this time. Timmy was in your house, and now God knows where he is and what's happened to him. If he's hurt... What if he's hurt? What if he's hurt and we can't find him? What if we never find him? God, I'm so scared. I'm scared, too. We'll find him, okay? And he's gonna be all right. Damn you, and damn your promises. Why don't you just admit it? You never wanted Timmy, and that's why you could walk out on him. I walked out on you! Oh, you didn't walk out on Tim? No, God, no! Then where are you, Paul? Where are you when he needs you?
How did you meet Naomi? It's luck, really. She came into my store to buy a present for Tim. Next week, she came back with him. I could tell she wanted to see what he thought of me first. I'm glad I passed the test, but... To be honest, I think that's an unfair burden to place on a kid. Yeah. When Paul and I were living in New York, Timmy came to the hospital and Paul introduced me as his good friend, Shani. I'll never forget the look on that little boy's face. He stared at me and didn't say a word. Finally got so awkward, Paul made some dumb remark like she doesn't bite. It isn't true. Timmy has a wound that goes very deep, and I'll always feel responsible for putting it there. Still hurts. Isn't that funny? When I stop hating you, where am I? Stuck with this, this feeling. Man. Don't, don't call me that, please. Just don't. It's just, it's sort of hard for me to ask. What? If it had been you that needed things different, could you have left him? No, Paul. I couldn't have left him. I couldn't stay. When we find him, tell him that. How? That you left for your own needs and you're not sorry. Where the hell does that leave him? With me. To visit you as he wants and to define you as he wants. Naomi. Paul, you left to live your own life, then live it. But don't ask him to take responsibility for your decision. Do you think that I don't love him? I hope for his sake you make those needs count. Answer me, damn it. Paul, what do you want? Do you want him to believe you didn't leave him? You did. It's what you wanted, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes! Okay, yes. Yeah, it's what I wanted. And that's exactly what you have. Why can't you just accept it? Oh, my God. Oh. Let me. He ran away from me, ran away from my house. Let me talk to him. Alone, please. Okay. Paul. Don't yell at him. I'll wait back at the house. Hey, partner, you all right? You sure had us scared. Your mom and I were looking everywhere for you. What's going on? I've been around you, no. No what? Jason's dad died of cancer. Sam? Sam died when? What's the difference? He got it from Jason's cat. What? I figured it out myself. Jason's cat got sick, and the vet said it had leukemia, so they put it to sleep. But right after that, Jason's dad got cancer. Didn't even have a cold, so all of a sudden got real sick and died. I just don't get it. To me, sometimes there just isn't an answer. You gotta have answers, Dad. It's too scary. I know. I know, son. I wish I'd been with you when Jason's dad died. You know what I would have told you? What? There may be some controversy, but no one has ever proven that feline leukemia can be transmitted to a human being. Are you sure? I'm sure. Besides, the vet already gave this little guy a clean bill of health. Look at this. Hold on. Here's what we'll do. Make a little carrying case for this guy, all right? Why do you love Shandell? 
I think she's an exceptional person. Why? She can deal with a lot of things that I'm no good at. Like what? Like uh, patients at the hospital. Sometimes they die, Timmy. Like Jason's dad, and when that happens, Shandell is the first person I turn to. She's the one person I can depend on to comfort the family. She, more than any of the other nurses that I've ever worked with, she knows what to say even when people all around her are falling apart. You're like a team. We fix the stuff we can see, and Shani fix the stuff we can't see. That's a good way of putting it. I wish you could be more like Shani. I wish so, too, son. Why'd you have to move so far away? Well, this job isn't like any job I've ever had in my life. You know, most of the patients don't have a whole lot of advantages, and it feels really good to be able to help them. Well, why couldn't you do the same kind of stuff in New York? Well, maybe I could have, but I didn't think so at the time. When your mom and I were together, I was only aware of all the things I couldn't do. And Shani changed that. She believed in me, and that made all the difference. I believe in you, Dad. Why didn't that make a difference? pretty. I don't think I've heard it before. My father was a pilot. Shandell is a maneuver he loved to do in his plane. Oh, what is it? It's a, a quick climb with a sharp turn in another direction. Oh, sounds dangerous. I haven't had a chance to say this, but I admire you, Naomi. You've raised a terrific little boy, and I know that isn't easy. Sometimes just thinking about the responsibility overwhelms me. Well, we all feel that at one time or another. It's a good sign. It means you really want to get it right. Yeah, I do. Don't forget this. I've already got one at home. Your mom bought you a baseball glove? Louie. So, how does he measure up? He's there, okay? Okay. You seem to have a lot of thoughts lately. No. Mine are so jumbled up, they don't come out the way I want them to. I hate that you're not a baby anymore. I'd love to give you a good squish. I've got to go. Hey, Tim. Your mom says you prefer to be called Tim. No, 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 it's not what you think. What is it? I don't know. Why don't we call it a passkey? You know, like, uh, they're having a club. What do you think, you want to join? 
what do I get if I do? You get to come and go as you please. Don de Leon. What? Tooth of a lion for the shape of the leaves, right? Right, I didn't, I didn't even think you were listening. I didn't think you were. Hey, gotta get them by the roots or they grow back. Yeah. Tim. I'm sorry. I messed up. But I promise I'll do a whole lot better. Okay? Okay. to be trusted. It's okay. I'm kind of glad. Yeah, me too. It was a real great squish. You know something? I told you that uh, I feel a little jumbled up in here. Well, I guess maybe it's all one big thought. And it's just that I love you, son. I'm not dead. I love you too. Cruzy's on, but the water's perfect, 100 by now. What do you say? You go. You sure? I don't feel like getting into my suit. It doesn't fit. I couldn't get into it if I tried. I'm pregnant, Paul. What do you think? Um. <laughs> you know what else I think? What? I think if Timmy were to come home right now, we would all join hands and jump into that pool with our clothes <laughs> on. Oh, he's not likely to walk through the door. No, not likely. <gasps> Huh. You're not going to chicken out on me, are you? <sighs> no way. Let's go. You ready? Yeah. One, two, two three, three, four! Oh! <laughs> 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 Stop the car. Did you say something, honey? Louie, stop the car. What's wrong? I want to get out. Tim! You guys are crazy. Nobody takes a kid on their honeymoon. Tim, are you sure about this? Louie, tell her it looked really weird. Your decision? My decision. Tim says it looked really weird. I don't like this. I know. Bon voyage.
that shower fresh feeling all day with Vans. When you feel shower fresh, you feel good about yourself. Get that shower fresh feeling and feel good about yourself all day. Buying a new car is a big step. With many car makers, the minute you drive it out the door, you may feel like you're on your own. But at Oldsmobile, you're covered by the Oldsmobile Edge, the most comprehensive owner satisfaction program in the industry, standard on every new Oldsmobile. We're with you every step of the way. It's a new generation of it should be illegal for my brother to eat corn checks. My belly's getting a headache. Next time I eat checks with him, I'm wearing earmuffs. I'm getting hungry. Deliciously crunchy corn checks. Now with a crunchy new shape and a great crunchy taste. Food checks are very crunchy. Great tasting corn check cereal. The crunch for your bunch. Got a painful cold? Alka Seltzer Plus relieves painful oh. cold symptoms some others miss. Everything feels better, better, better. Alka Seltzer Plus Cold Medicine, relief for your painful cold. I used to have dandruff, so I tried Head and Shoulders. Then I tried Seltzer Blue. Blue is better. Seltzer Blue relieves dandruff flecking better than Head and Shoulders, and doctors recommend it more than Head and Shoulders, Danorex, and Tegrin. Blue is better. Seltzer Blue. Iraq's ambassador to the United Nations says his country has already released 10 prisoners of war, including six Americans. A United Airlines jet disintegrates on impact as it crashes in Colorado. And we'll tell you why this popular decongestant is being recalled. Nightcast is next. There's something in the air because in three days, Quantum is leaping to Wednesday nights on NBC. What took you so long? Monday night, she's been framed for murdering her husband and terrorized by the deranged woman who killed him. Now it's time to fight back. Barbara Eden and Loretta Swit star in the NBC world premiere movie, Hell Hath No Fury. And Tuesday night, Matlock defends a longtime friend framed for murdering his business partner. Then Tibbs is about to become the father of twins just when he's arrested for the murder of his former partner. It's a special two-hour in the heat of the night. Tuesday night, only on NBC.